What is up everybody and welcome back to another video. I am The Hobbyist and today I'm going to be doing a fix on my Low C Tenacity Rally Car Build. Now this rig ever since I had it had a bit of an issue with the back differential. It was always breaking and now that I've converted to a rally car and I'm always slamming on the brakes trying to throw the back end out it has gotten extremely extremely annoying. So I'm going to eliminate the problem once and for all. I have got a brand new diff case and brand new diff gears. Now, the problem with this thing is not incredibly obvious unless you're driving it, but I'll try to demonstrate. So listen to what the uh, vehicle sounds like when I roll it forward. Pretty quiet, but when I roll it backwards, and do you, do you hear that little click that it made? That is makes a horrible, horrible grinding noise when you slam on the brakes when it's driving. And I know exactly what the issue is, which is why we're replacing these parts. And all of these new exact parts are going in. The only thing that's being salvaged from the differential that's in there now is the ring gear, the outputs, and the pin for the outputs. Everything else is being replaced. And this is actually the upgraded version with the new Tenacity gears, because um, this is an original Losi Tenacity T but this has the newer gears, which are a lot stronger. So I'm going to uh, take the body off, throw you guys on time-lapse so you can see me disassembling it, and we'll get right into it. All right, body off, and I'm going to be disassembling uh, just enough of the back end so that I can get the differential out. So I'm taking off the bumper, I'm taking off the front diff case, things like that. Hopefully I can get away with not disassembling too much, but we'll see. So I'm going to throw you guys on time lapse and we'll get right into it. All right, so as you saw in the time lapse, I did have a few issues getting the differential out. Um, I had a strip screw, so I had to use these. These are called vamp pliers. They're for grabbing screws like vertically. Um, anyway, so I got the differential out and uh, the grease is still decent and stuff like that. Um, and there's these little cuffs here that I have to remove, bearings, things like that. But I'm only using the out drives and the ring gear from this differential assembly everything else is going to be brand new. Um, but I know for a fact that it isn't the ring gear that's having the issues, because if you look closely, the ring gear is in uh, good condition. So I know it's not that. So we're gonna try the internal gears and I'll show you what those look like once I get them out. All right, I got the ring gear off. So that's a big step in the right direction. Um, so we're keeping that. So now I got to open this up and I'm going to drain it out and do all that stuff off camera uh, because it'd just be easier that way. But I'll show you guys the important bits. So I'm going to move on to disassembling this. All right, guys, so check this out. This is what's in the differential right now. Yeah, that's not good. I can already see chips in the diff gear teeth. So I'm going to completely drain this out, get out the parts I need, and we'll start reassembling uh, the new one. All right, guys, so I've got the differential completely disassembled and I'm going to be trashing some parts um, just because they're so destroyed. So right in here, now let me find the angle that you're gonna be able to see this the best. I don't know if you can see that, but in that groove right down there, it is absolutely destroyed. So I think that's part of why things were clicking. And as a result, it's taken all of these gears with it um, so we're going to take out these gears. I'm throwing these all away. And then it's also, this differential only has one set of spider gears in it. And that was one of the big issues with the original Tenacity. So I'm putting in uh, a new set that has four spider gears in it. So with those thrown out, we are going to open up all of these parts and I'm going to fully assemble without, and then not put any oil in just to show you guys how everything's gonna work. And then I'll assemble it and show you guys everything that's gone into it. So, 
I'll put you guys back on in a minute. So I know I said I was going to use the original pins, but uh, it looks like the kit comes with the pins. So uh, I'm not going to be re reusing those either. But I have separated all of the parts out. So I've got gears, I've got spacers, um, and these go in here. So if I open this up, so you guys can see this. There we go. I'll open this up right here. Let me take it out of the bag. I get brand new case, brand new gasket, brand new cover. Uh, uh, it's still got the metal inserts and then it also has the O-rings. So these components are all going to come together now and create a brand spanking new differential. So I'm gonna put it all together and show you guys what it looks like. Alrighty, so <laughs> it is taking me 15 minutes just to get that stupid little pin in because the out drive goes here, and then there's an O-ring in here, and then there's this like flat spacer, and then the pin, and then that pin is what this gear drops onto, if I can line it up, there we go. And that's what causes that gear to spin. So yeah, that took a while. So I had to use a bunch of different needle nose pliers and things like that to get that to work. So just something I wanna point out, make sure you don't drop the pin, because I dropped it like 30 times. And I'm so glad that I was able to find it again. All right, way quicker process now. I got the spider gears in. So now there's two little notches in the shafts and as you can see, there are now four spider gears. So it all works much better. I have to push it in at the moment, but you can see all the gears are spinning. So now I'm going to put together the cap. So the cap will contain the gasket and the other main bevel gear and once I got all of that put together, I'm going to put some oil in it. So I use 100K diff fluid. This is a CST, 100,000 CST diff fluid. And that is because I want the back to be a bit more stiffer because despite being all wheel drive, I still want this to be able to drift. So I'm gonna get the cap put together and get some oil in it and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, I've got the cap done. So that's the cap is much simpler than the actual differential assembly. This just goes on top. You see it's got the gasket in there. So now I've got to fill this with oil. So now the trick with this is um, being such a thick fluid, you just kind of have to hope for the best. And you guys probably can't see the fluid going down. I can. It is going extremely, extremely slowly. So hang on, let me see if I can get it to start flowing. Come on. It'll start flowing eventually, but it takes so long because it is such thick fluid. There we go. So we're gonna be doing that. So I'm gonna get this topped off without having to look through a camera so that I can get the right level. And I'll put you guys back on when I've got that done. All right, so a quick tip when filling up fluid, you can see there's about a millimeter there from the top, the fluid is up there. So you wanna have a bit of a millimeter gap from the top so that when the cap goes on, then it's not gonna leak everywhere. So I'm going to very carefully do this without the camera on, just so that if I screw up, I'm not a huge embarrassment. <laughs> so I'm gonna get this on, I'm gonna put the ring gear back on, and then we're gonna test to see how smooth it is. All right, so I've got the differential fully reassembled. One thing to note is the threads on this piece are not tapped, so you do have to tap those yourself. But as you can see, it is quite firm now. The differential is working beautifully, but it is quite firm, and that is because of the fluid that I put in it. So now I'm going to put the shims back on. I'm gonna give the bearings a quick clean on these collars, put it all back together, and we will see how much of an improvement it makes. All right, so I've got the cuffs back on, they're all cleaned up. So now I'm going to put this back into the diff case and re-grease the ring gear uh, so that there's no issues there. I also might try and get some of that oil out if you can see in the out drive. So I'm gonna get that done and put you guys back on. Sorry if I'm kind of skipping all around here, guys, but I'm trying to get this done on a very tight schedule. And also I feel like a lot of this disassembly and stuff just would not be that interesting to you. Anyway, let's move on to the next section. If you're wondering what grease I use on my differentials, it's this automotive grease, this Mystic JT6 
high temp multi-purpose grease. I got this at North 40 one day. It's just this massive tub of grease and it'll probably last me forever. And it was only like 13 bucks. So there you go. That's what I use. All right, so differential is now grease. It's probably a little too much grease, but hopefully that spreads out. And it is a high speed vehicle. So now I'm gonna put everything back in uh, and I'm gonna bolt this entire thing back together and I'll put you back on when it's done. All right, after a good bit of time wrestling with it to get it back together, I have fully reassembled this differential and now you can hear it is much, much smoother. Right here, let me put my mic up to it. Hang on, let me clip it here. Listen to this. It sounds so good. I, I truly do think that that will have solved the clicking problem in this vehicle forever. And it was a repair that, I'm not even joking, was probably two years past due. So I am very, very happy that I was finally able to get it done. And hopefully for any of you who have made suffered the same issue, hopefully this will answer all of your questions. So anyway guys, that is gonna do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment in the section below for what videos you'd like to see next. But that is all for today, and I'll see you in the next one.